Hi, okay, so this is increasing and decreasing functions. I might lump it in with stationary points because it's on the, the next thing and there isn't actually any um, questions for it. Right, so increasing and decreasing. It is what it sounds like. If my graph is going up, it's increasing. My gradient is greater than zero. If the graph is going down, it's decreasing. My gradient is less than zero. So increasing is where the gradient is bigger than zero. Decreasing is where it's less than zero. What we are going to do, which is really important, is where the gradient is zero. And that's what happens next. Right, so it says for the curve, state when it's increasing. So if I differentiate it, so dy by dx is 4x minus 8. Um, I'm looking when it's increasing, when dy by dx is greater than 0. That statement is really, really, really important. We must do that statement. So I'm looking where 4x minus 8 is greater than 0. So 4x is greater than 8. x is greater than 2. And if you remember, anything which is more than a single value, let's do a wrap around on it. So x belongs to the real numbers such that x is greater than 2. Right, so you've got one for decreasing. Same plan, differentiate it, put a statement, and then sort it. So hopefully you've paused it. Uh, well, that's what you get. So we want that wrap around, don't we? X belongs to the reals, uh, just to be on the safe side. Example two says state the range of values and it's decreasing. Now, before it was a quadratic, so we knew it was just kind of increasing from from there onwards, and that's fine. But here I've got a cubic. So if you think for decreasing on this, it's going to be there. It's going to be in between two values when I do it. So I'm going to have to be careful with that. So that's another thing come out of it. So if I differentiate it, so f dash of x is 3x squared minus 8x plus 4. I am decreasing when f dashed of x is less than zero. So we're happy we've got y goes to dy by dx and f of x goes to f dashed of x. So I've got 3x squared minus 8x plus 4 is less than zero. So if I put it into poly, it gives me x is 2 thirds and x is 2. Right, so what I've got here aha, is a quadratic inequality. And if you remember, with a quadratic inequality, I solve it, I graph it, oops, two thirds that's supposed to say, and I identify the region. So solve it, graph it, identify the region. Less than is below the x-axis. So I'm looking between these numbers here. So I know it's two, oh, pen sticky, two thirds, less than x, less than two. But then I'm just going to do the wrap around because it isn't a single value that x belongs to the reals. There. All right, so we've got a similar one here. So you differentiate it, then you put your statement, then you solve it. So I've got my solving bit here from Polly. And greater than means above. There. Ah. Uh, now I've got a bit of, yeah, that's okay, look here. So we've got x is less than minus 1, or x is greater than 5. There's a little bit of contention here with the fact that should you really write it as two separate sets of brackets. But we're getting away with one at the moment. Um, Let's have a look at example three. There, let's have a look at example three. So it says state the values for which it's increasing. 
So f dash of x is 3x squared plus 12x plus 12, uh, increasing when f dash of x is greater than 0. So 3x squared plus 12x plus 12 is greater than 0. Stick it in poly. So I've got my quadratic inequality again. This seems to be um, very similar to the second one, doesn't it? So if I put it in poly, all I get out is x is minus 2. So if I graph it, because I've solved it, now I've graphed it, I've got a repeated root here, haven't I? So it touches a 2. And if you look, now then, you've got to remember what you're doing here. You're looking where the graph is above the x-axis. That's what I'm doing. So where is the graph? I see why this example is in. It's quite a clever example. Above the x-axis. And the graph is above the x-axis for absolutely everything apart from minus 2, where it hits the axis. So how do we write that then? So we've got to say that it works for all the numbers, so x belongs to the reals, but doesn't work uh, for minus. Why don't put that y-axis there? The donkey, y-axis should be over there. But it doesn't work for minus 2. So random one, that will be very nice in what it does. Why will we on? We're nearly 70 minutes. So I wonder if I should do a really, really short one, I'll just keep going. I might just try and keep going so we can get this in fast or not. Uh, show that it's increasing. Right, so it says here, uh, so differentiate it first, so f dash of x, 3x squared plus 6x plus 6. I'm running out of time. What I'm going to do now, because it's a show that, what I want to do is I want to show that the gradient graph is above the x-axis. So I want to show that the gradient graph is above the x-axis. And an easy way to do that is to use completing the square. I'm just going to pause it while I do completing the square. So I'm just, just nearly finishing the completing the square bit. So I've got three lots of x plus 1 squared plus 3. Now if I graph it, I know that the vertex is minus 1, 3. And I know it's a U shape. And that's the important bit. Uh, so let me move that uh, Y axis. That seems to be very good at putting my Y axis in many places. So minus 1, 3. So I know that the vertex is minus 1, 3. And I know it's a U shape. Now I need to use both those qualities to say that it's a that it's always above the x-axis. So the fact that the vertex is minus 1, 3, that I'm saying that it's above the x-axis, and it's a u-shape, tells me that it's above the x-axis. So if the y-values of the gradient graph are above the x-axis, it must be increasing. So if y values of the gradient graph, you can read my writing, is above the x-axis, must be increasing. For all that. It's quite a tough one, that one. We'll probably go through that one again, because it's quite a tough one to get your head around. And I've just done loads of examples on the bounce. Right, see you later. Bye-bye.